Today, I'm going to be talking about polymers and their applications in nanomedicine. I'll cover how they're made, how they're broken down, their current uses, and their potential uses in the future. Before we start, I need to make sure everyone's up to speed on what these new terms mean. You should know from GCSE that a polymer is simply a long chain made up of simple repeating units. These units could either be the same unit, repeated over and over again, or a selection of different units, coming together to build a more complex molecule. But what about this other new word, nanomedicine? You'll have to bear with me because this description comes in several parts. A nanometer is one millimeter times 10 to the minus six, or something that's really, really small. So we get words like nanotechnology and nanomaterials, which are just descriptors for the science of making really small but useful stuff. From that, we can understand that nanomedicine is simply the application of this nanotechnology to a medical scenario. Of course, before we can apply our knowledge of polymers, we first have to understand their reactions. So, how are polymers made? Well, we're going to be focusing on addition polymerization, and more specifically, the reaction mechanism for free radical polymerization. You may have heard of free radicals before, but just as a reminder, a free radical is any molecule or atom with an unpaired electron. It's represented simply by drawing a dot next to the atom that has the unpaired electron. Every polymerization reaction happens in three steps. Initiation. So we have our molecule with a peroxide bond and it undergoes homolytic fission, which we show with these fish hook arrows that I'm drawing now, which means that the two electrons in the peroxide bond move separately. That gives us, with the addition of the heat and light, that gives us two identical radicals. The second step is propagation. So we have our molecule of propene and our radical attacks this. So we have an electron to here, one electron from the bond here, and one going to here. That removes the double bond and gives this molecule with a radical there. If we then have another molecule of propene, you can see the same thing happening with this radical. So our fish hook arrows go here. And then you can see how the chain would keep growing on and on until you end up with a long polymer chain that looks like this. The final step is the termination, which occurs when two of the chains meet. So let's just draw this out quickly. And then the mirror image of that, just for ease of use. We get the two radicals joining like so. In the end, this gives us our polymer which looks like this. So we have our repeating unit here and our repeating unit here. And there you go, one polymer. Now we know how polymers are formed, we can see the potential uses of knowing the reaction mechanism. For example, living polymerization is a form of addition polymerization, as we just looked at, that removes the termination step. This allows chemists more control over the way polymers are synthesized. For example, polymer chains have constant growth rates. There's the ability to choose the end group and the potential to add a different monomer for each stage of polymerization, which means we can make a polymer which looks something like this. This molecule goes by the catchy name of PEG B poly N N dash 2 amino ethyl 2 amino ethyl aspartamide or PEGB PASDET for short. This is known as a block copolymer, so called because there are blocks of different monomers joined to each other. Now, when you think of polymers, you probably think of them in their uses as materials. Well, this is still applicable to medicine. Let's take the polymer that we were just looking at. It could be used to make my cells. Think of these as Maltesers that are 50 nanometers in diameter. The polymer is a chocolate shell around the outside and it can be used to hold a core of medicinal drugs. 
But why would we bother to do this? Let's get straight to the point. We need more effective ways to treat disease. One in three of us is going to get cancer at some point in our lives, not to mention all the other horrible ways to die as well. Currently, our treatments for cancer are quite indiscriminate. With chemotherapy in particular, the drugs given not only kill off the cancerous mutated cells, but quite a large number of the good healthy cells as well. Using what the pros call a drug delivery system, we can ensure that there are as few healthy cell casualties as possible during treatment. Imagine our little polymer malteser. The PEG on the outside prevents the harmful drugs on the inside from damaging anything. Once the malteser has got to its destination, heat or UV light is used to break down the polymer shell and release the drugs straight into the heart of the tumour. Another benefit is that the heat and light can be very targeted, which means that even if there are other micelles elsewhere in the body, their polymer shells will not be broken down and therefore the drugs will not harm other parts of the body. But how can heat or light make such a stable structure break down? Well, there are several ways of breaking down polymers, but we're going to look at thermal decomposition because it's quite similar to the free radical addition that we looked at earlier. So we start with initiation again. We have our polymer chain here, and as with the last time, we get homolytic fission, which gives us two radicals and loses the hydrogen atom. So we end up with a hydrogen free radical. Now onto the propagation. The radical that we have here can react with a number of molecules but here we'll use oxygen so that's O2 and again this splits like so this splits like so to form a peroxy radical which looks like this and then if it reacts with another chain like so so we have the breaking of this bond again then we get our hydroperoxide which looks like this and another radical identical to the first one that we had so then the hydroperoxide splits like this to give us two new radicals which will continue to propagate the breakdown of the polymer Termination usually occurs naturally by the free radicals forming unreactive products together until there are no free radicals left and the polymer is completely broken down. So we've looked at how polymers are made, their uses in nanomedicine and how they can be broken down to give great results when treating disease. I think this is an area of medicine that we're going to be hearing a lot more about in future years. If you're at all interested, I've listed the resources that I used in the description below.